Between 1870 and 1996, more than 150,000 indigenous children were taken from their families and sent to residential schools. Their identities were stolen, cultures extinguished. They were undernourished, neglected, and often abused. There were more than 4,100 confirmed deaths. Did your school have a graveyard? How could this have happened? Where do we go from here? The Witness Blanket, a national monument to recognize the atrocities of the Indian residential school era. Strewn in the wake of the Indian residential schools are an immeasurable number of broken or damaged pieces. These fragmented cultures, crumbling buildings, segments of language, and grains of diminished pride are often connected only by the common experience that created them. Imagine those pieces, symbolic and tangible, woven together in the form of a blanket. A blanket made from pieces of residential schools, churches, government buildings, and cultural structures. A blanket where the story of each piece is as important to its construction as the wood and screws that hold it together. A blanket with the sole purpose of standing in eternal witness to the effects of the Indian residential school era. The system created and run by churches and the Canadian government to take the Indian out of the child. Left alone, these pieces may be forgotten, lost, buried, or worse, be uncomfortable reminders that leave painful impressions on the minds and hearts of those who recognize what they represent. Individually, they are paragraphs of a disappearing narrative. Together, they are strong and formidable, collectively able to recount for future generations the true story of loss, strength, reconciliation, and pride. I made this blanket for the survivors, and for the children who never came home. For the dispossessed, the displaced, and the forgotten. I made this blanket for the parents who hold their stories deep inside, afraid of what confronting them might cause in their hearts, afraid of how the truth will affect their children. It is for those who are angry, those in pain, and for those who are working to find their way through. For those who are bitter, and those who remember, and those who have spent a lifetime trying to forget. To forget the braids that were shorn, the heads that were shaved, the dignity that was stolen, and the beatings, abuse, and violation. I made this blanket so that I will never forget. So that we will never forget. It is for the families who have lost their aunts and uncles and sisters and brothers and mothers and fathers and children for the ones who left us too soon. We have all lost someone too soon. I made this for the communities that were broken, their future scooped up and sent away, never to be the same. Silence replacing the sound of children's laughter. For the victims of violence and the perpetrators of that same violence, some of whom were never taught a better way. We cannot excuse violence, but if we can understand the root of the matter, we can begin to find solutions. For those like me who didn't realize how deeply we were affected until we tried to speak our traditional languages or sing our traditional songs, who didn't know what we didn't know. For those who found, when they had children of their own, they had to learn how to show them love. I love my daughter, my only child. But I was afraid to have a son for fear that I wouldn't know how to relate to him. That is the way it was for many years between me and my father. It is for those of us who spent part of our lives ashamed of our heritage. For those who have yet to learn how to respect themselves for whom they are and for where they are from. I made this for our cultures, our languages, and our traditions that were legislated away for the governments and churches who tried to take them, 
It is for the resilience that grasp to those traditions, sustaining them through generations, so that they are now able to flourish again. I made this for anyone who doesn't know what a residential school is, or the truth of what happened there, or the policies and laws that created them. I made this for those who wonder, when are they going to get over it? So that we can have that discussion in earnest and begin to change those perceptions. I made this blanket for the people who want to learn and those who feel guilt and for those who walk beside us and those who are just now ready to walk beside us. I made this for the conversations still to come, for the lessons we have yet to learn and for the future we are building together. I made this blanket for hope. I made it for truth. I made it to catch our tears. I made it for reconciliation. I made it for me and I made it for each of you. In the traditions of my Salish ancestors, it is meant to uplift our spirits, protect us when we are vulnerable, and to honor good work when it is done. It is for our children and our children's children and all the generations to come. It is for my daughter. When I think back and remember, at the very beginning, as I sat and thought about what I could do, through all of my ideas and dreams, through the collection of the pieces and the success and failure of the creative process, most of all, in my heart, my truth is that I made this blanket for my father. We need to honor the survivors and remember the children who were lost. We need to speak openly about these stories to ensure that this never happens again. Later in the show, it is the finale of the WSO's Backstage Pass. But after the break, it's an in-studio performance with David James and Chris Ulrich. <laughs> 